Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. As we begin October, Minnesota health officials are reporting a surge in COVID cases and fatalities. They say vaccinations are still the best way to avoid severe infection against COVID, as well as against the seasonal flu. We know you have lots of questions about the flu and the flu shot during COVID. For some answers, we talked by Zoom with Ingrid Johansson, the Senior Manager of Community Critical Care at M Health Fairview. So this year's flu vaccine is as important, if not more important than any other year to get vaccinated. Um, the flu vaccines that will be available to you uh, are quadrivalent, meaning that they're going to protect you against four different flu viruses. And these are the four viruses that researchers um, have decided, you know, are more, more likely to be spreading and making you sick. So it's, um, you know, there are several vaccine options out there, but really the most important thing is that you get vaccinated this year, just like any other, any other flu season. And again, who should be getting it? Maybe they haven't gotten it in the past. Should they get it this year? What about it for kids? If you're pregnant, I mean, who should be getting and who maybe should not get the flu vaccine? Yeah, so our message is really pretty much everyone should be getting the flu vaccine with very few exceptions. So we vaccinate anyone age six months and older. So it is available for really young um, babies. So six months old and older. and Everyone should get it, um, especially people who are um, maybe higher risk for getting seriously sick from flu. So those include our older community members, um, people who are pregnant, um, people who have chronic health conditions, and our really young kids. Those are all groups that we consider to be really high risk for serious flu complications. So we really want to stress that those individuals get vaccinated, but truly, um, with very few exceptions, we really we really suggest that anyone age six months or older get vaccinated, which will help protect them, protect yourself, and protect your community. And as a reminder, what would be some of those um, potential side effects I might get from the flu shot? Yeah, so potential side effects. So like other vaccines, you know, most people have fewer or no side effects. Um, but some people do report things like soreness at the site of the injection or redness or sometimes even some localized swelling right where we've put the shot in your arm. Um, others sometimes report things like body aches, uh, headaches, even fever or chills. And you know, these are often very short-lived symptoms and can be managed at home with um, distressed or even over-the-counter Tylenol or ibuprofen, for example. Um, so those would probably be the more common, um, commonly reported kind of short-lived side effects that people might feel after, immediately after or, or a few hours after vaccination. And is there a symptom that if they develop that after getting the flu vaccine that they maybe should contact their healthcare provider or um, seek other emergency care? Yeah, again, those, those reactions would be very, very rare um, and unexpected. But if you were experiencing severe symptoms or uh, symptoms of an allergic reaction, that we would suggest that you get medical, um, medical care or call your provider. You know, I know viewers want to know, like, um, is it safe to get the flu vaccine um, at, and maybe at the same time that you get a, a if you still need to get a COVID um, vaccine or, or getting a booster or something? Yeah, that's actually something we're really happy about is that um, it is safe to get them both at the same time. So you don't need to wait. And if that's most convenient for you um, to get both at the same time, it is perfectly acceptable to do so. So you can get your, your COVID booster or your first or second dose in, in one arm and your flu shot in the other and um, leave well protected. Or if you have gotten your um, COVID vaccine, how soon could you get it afterwards? If you, you said you could do it at the same time, really. Yep, there is no, no need to wait. So there is um, no recommended um, time spacing between those vaccines. You can get them safely at the same time. What about if someone has like symptoms of um, COVID 
should they wait to get their flu vaccine at that point? Yeah, so anyone who has symptoms of COVID or known COVID or has had a significant exposure really should be isolating until um, that quarantine period is over or they've been told they no longer need to isolate. And that's really, we just don't want somebody milling about in community and potentially spreading the COVID um, virus. So we would ask that if you have symptoms of COVID or known COVID that you wait until that isolation period is over. Anything else um, besides the vaccine, which is um, the best way to protect against getting the flu, anything other things or ways that people can prevent and protect themselves against getting the flu this winter? Yeah, so like you said, vaccination is um, really the single best way to reduce the risk of flu, but there are other measures that we recommend in addition to vaccination. So, um, you know, like common sense things like avoiding people who are sick, um, wash your hands frequently, you know, be really mindful, not touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Those are all ways that we can um, um, become ill and, you know, take care of your immune system. So stay well rested if you can, um, stay hydrated, good solid nutrition, all of those things help just support general general immunity and, and a good healthy immune system. And then if you do become sick, you know, we, we ask that you do your best to help protect others by staying home. If you're sick, um, you know, really don't, don't get out there and start and, and spread these viruses around, wash your hands frequently, cover your, cover your cough, cover your sneeze, all those common sense measures that, that we know can help um, reduce spread. Any other advice on the flu vaccine or or people should go get their flu vaccine or where they can get more information about it? Yeah, so get your flu vaccine. Now is a great time. This is a wonderful time to go get vaccinated. Um, it's pretty readily available around the community. So from your provider, a pharmacy, um, we are running multiple mobile vaccination clinics in community settings like faith communities and community organizations and nonprofits. Um, if you have questions, some great resources on the internet would include the CDC, um, the Minnesota Department of Health website, you know, your healthcare provider. I also like recommending people check out Families Fighting Flu, which is a great resource online, or um, immunize.org also has some really comprehensive information for people who are looking um, if they have more specific questions about vaccinations in general or a seasonal flu vaccine. Well, great advice and we really appreciate your time. I know you're busy, so thank you for taking time today with us. You're welcome, thank you, stay healthy. Started to panic, was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too- Hey, sorry I didn't respond, I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Our kids are back playing sports this fall, and that means doctors are seeing lots of sports-related injuries. We visit with Dr. Christy Trussell at the urgency room to find out what kinds of injuries they are seeing and advice for parents on how to keep their kids safe and reduce injuries. The most common, the most common athletic injury, uh, you know, statistically speaking, for for organized sports is an ankle sprain. So we're, we're definitely seeing plenty of those. Um, the uh, you know, concussion also comes up frequently. I think you know, parents are really aware of concussion risks and know the benefits of getting a good initial evaluation for uh, concussion symptoms. So those are the two of the really common things that we see at the urgency room. And those would be reasons to come to the urgency room to see an emergency care physician like yourself. Then. Absolutely. If you if your you or your child injures themselves, we we be happy to uh, evaluate that injury. We have X-ray on site to be able to determine if there's signs of fracture, um, and then we can provide you know, splinting or bracing and instructions for additional care. And then also to recognize the symptoms of um, 
a concussion and things like that. Right. Yes, yeah. so we we very frequently evaluate head injuries. Um, there's a couple of things we look for in every person with a head injury, and that's signs of bleeding in the brain, skull fracture, or those concussion symptoms. To evaluate bleeding in the brain or skull fracture, we have CT available to um, do that more detailed test. The majority of the majority of kids with head injuries that we see don't actually need that test, but you know certainly available if we see any red flags, um, and we ha we do a detailed history and exam to determine uh, need for imaging, and then uh, to determine you know how severe we think the follow the concussion is and help with follow up care. Yeah, yeah, especially when they're so young, they can't really tell you where it hurts or what it is, and and I know that. I always think, how can you tell the difference between like a sprain and a and a broken bone? And like with my daughter, she fell off a playground equipment when she was seven and hers was very evident. It was a broken bone. But I mean, how can you what would be the advice on how to tell the difference and when they should be seen? Yeah. So sometimes it is tricky. The um, you certainly if something looks deformed or displaced, that's a reason to be seen right away. If you have significant swelling, sometimes that can come from a sprain or soft tissue injury too, but significant swelling should be seen and evaluated for, for a more serious injury. Um, sometimes you can't tell until you do the x-ray, um, but if you're having a lot of pain with using that uh, arm or leg, if you can't walk on your, on your foot, ankle, extremity, then that, that needs to be evaluated. Um, persistent pain that even if it didn't seem like it was that bad, but persistent pain that just is is not getting better, that's another reason to be seen. What would be some tips that you might give to parents on to prevent some of these sports injuries? Well, it it does depend a little bit on the sport. However, knowing what knowing what the skills are, talking with the coach about where your child's at and what um, what skills and drills need to be learned in order to play the, play the sport safely. Um, good warm-ups can prevent uh, strains and muscle strains and, uh, and other injuries too. So you know, making the plan with the coach for uh, skill development, warm-up and um, what things need to be, what things need to be prepared before a higher level competition. And if there is an injury, come see you. Yes, we'd be happy to see you at the urgency room. Well, Dr. Trussell, always great to see you and thank you for your information. We appreciate it. Thank you. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. And welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Joining us now, I'm very pleased to have with us Rachel Larson from Flow State. It's glad to have you back in on Inside Healthcare. It's been a while, so thank you. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So you're going to talk about um, strengthening our muscles and our joints and our minds through movement that mm -hmm. matters. So why is it so yes. important to strengthen all of our muscles and our joints, and how do we go about doing that? So first of all, why? Yeah. Right, right, the, the why behind it. Um, and I think maybe I'd, I'd like to start by just telling you a little bit about me and my background and why flow state. Absolutely. Um, so my background is as a registered dietitian and then also a personal trainer and everything wellness and, and fitness essentially. And my whole life, my passion has been about movement. And personally, just feeling so much better mentally and physically the more I move, the more energy I have, the more centered I am, the happier I am as a person, the better mom, the better wife, all of those, all of those things. And earlier this year I had a chance to, to get this new virtual platform started and really start sharing this passion, passion of movement, passion of exercise with others. And what, what a great opportunity when we have this virtual platform. Anyone from anywhere can, can access it. And to your 
point though, why? Why why does fitness matter? Why does exercise matter? So I I stretching. I, and stretching. <laughs> I geek out on this stuff. I get really excited about it. Um, I've read multiple books, but the, the book that I wanna reference right now is called Spark by John Rattay. And he did studies on high schoolers actually. They did this zero hour and brought brought kiddos in and to put them with heart rate monitors and actually had them exercise a little bit. And, and these were, were kids that were struggling with their grades and they ended up being the highest scoring kids by the end of the year because they exercised before they went to class. And it, it, stimulates, the, um, it stimulates your brain to be able to learn. It's more malleable, it's more um, moldable. It, for, for us executives, it increases your executive function, helps you think better. But for us as people, it helps you think better, it regulates your emotions better, you sleep better, you don't ache as much, your joints totally and muscles don't yeah. hurt as much. It's like a it's like a almost like a, a pain antidote. It's it's amazing and I could go on and on. So I'll I'll pause there. It's a pill without a pill. <laughs> it's a pill without a pill. Exactly. <laughs> it's a magic yep. thing. So what would be like type of things that are good for stretching to help your muscles and your joints and all of that. So are you kind of asking like, what are some good yeah. stretches or yeah. some modalities? And we're gonna get a little bit more into that in just a little bit here, yeah. but just, just yeah. briefly. Well, I, you know, I, I tell you on a, on a regular everyday basis, movement, just get up and move. And think about all of the different ways your body moves. You, you rotate, you flex sideways, you can reach up, you can reach down and just think about everyday movement. And you're right, we are gonna get into five stretches you can do anywhere that I would recommend you all write down <laughs> and, and keep or watch this segment um, a number of times later on to, to just really, really keep feeling good. And, and it just takes these little, little pieces of, of movement done throughout the day to really boost your energy and your mood and help your body be healthier. And I mentioned that you're with Flow State and you're mm -hmm. co-founder of all that. What's, what is that program all about? And you said it's virtual or you have yes, virtual experiences. thank you, thank you. So the program is, is all, well, it's, it's, a, it's a membership platform. And so folks that decide they wanna be members, it's un, unlimited access to live classes. And we have between six and eight live classes every week, morning into evening, weekends. And then we also have a massive on-demand library. Um, from exercises such as, you know, as, as intensive as a kickboxing class, all the way to a standing stretch series, and even a two minute breath video. I mean, so we've got the a two full- A two minute breath. A two minute breath video for, you know, you're, you're giving a presentation or maybe you're going on set and you wanna <laughs> just breathe for two minutes, click play and, and you're guided through a couple minutes of breath. So we, we do have a range, but what we really specialize in is restorative movement, and helping people balance their bodies so that they can feel better and do all of the things that they want to do. We're going to show a very um, short clip of one of the classes that you were just describing, so we'll take a look at that. Float the arms back up. Take a breath here. And then we'll open to warrior two. So the back leg is going to open up, toes point to the long edge of the mat, the hips open, and then we sink down into our warrior two. Really stretching out through fingertips, breathing in and breathing out. Being really aware of the front knee, wanting that to be over the ankle. It's better to have the hips not sideways and have the front knee aligned over the front ankle. And from here, side angle, the front forearm can come to the thigh. The other arm floats up to the sky. Maybe sink a little bit deeper into the hips. You could even bring those fingertips down to the floor inside of the ankle, other arm up to the sky, breathing in and breathing out. Again, breath in and breath out. And from here, warrior two, reach back up. Sink down into that back hip, pause. Feeling the legs maybe burning here a little bit. And let's straighten without locking the front knee for triangle. We're gonna hinge at the hips. Maybe bring the hands to the hips and you can feel this crease at the front hip. So folding at the front hip here a little bit. So the spine is still fairly straight here. 
And then the front hand can slide down the leg, avoiding the kneecap. Tap arm floats up to the sky. And we'll hang out here and breathe. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. And we are back after that clip, and Rachel's going to show us uh, these five things that you can do at your home, whatever form you are or shape you are and stuff. This is that's everyone right. Can do this, so that's you're gonna right. You're going to take easy on me too, right? Yes, yes. I'm going to take I'm going to take it easy on Jody. So we're going to get started with just a, a few stretches that you can do anywhere, and believe me, there's a lot more, but we'll pick some for you for today. And so one of the first stretches, we're gonna just stretch our upper neck, we'll go our upper traps. So you're gonna push down through your wrists here a little bit, anchor down into shoulders. And I want us to turn our heads a few inches over to the right here. We'll drop the chin down and then lift up a little with your left earlobe. So kind of just lift up on that left side a little bit. So come over here to me, this way. Nope, bring your head to where, there you go, there you go. <laughs> That's it, That's it. We got it. And release, roll your wrist around a little bit. Now ideally you're gonna hold that for you know, 30, 40 seconds. All right, we'll go to the other side. So we're gonna anchor down through the wrist. So push down through the palms. Turn the head a few inches away from me. Drop your chin down a little. And then lift up on this right side of, yep, so bring your jaw towards me a little bit. Head, head that way and jaw towards me. There we go, we got it. There we go, just like that. I'm used to looking. I know, I know. <laughs> But what we're really doing is we're stretching from the base of the neck to the top of the shoulder oh, here. I can feel so, that. Yeah, can yeah. Feel so good. reaching, reaching down the side of the neck. There we go. And release and shake it out. We call that the headache muscle stretch because if you have a headache from tension, if you do that stretch, it usually goes away. Okay, uh, rear delt stretch. So bring okay. the left arm across the front, pull it into the body. That should feel good too. Turn the head a little side to side. So we're gonna get a couple stretches here in one because we're pulling on the arm, but then we're also moving the head side to side. You got it, there you go. Okay. And then release, other side. Well, let's bring the right arm across the front, pull it in a little bit. And what's this doing? It's This is stretching the muscles up. across the back of the shoulder and right, in nice towards the, yep, yep. That's, that's right, where we kind of get, get tired and this just feels really good. And you turn the head a little side to side. Oh, that does feel good. Yeah, it certainly does. Okay, and then we're gonna do a little bit of a warrior one stance for a calf stretch and hip flexor stretch. So we're just gonna step the left foot forward here. Okay. And you can see how we're, we're leaving the, so the right leg's forward, the left leg's back. You're just kind of leaving your heel down a little bit. And then options with the arms. We all like options. Jody, I'd like you to take a bent arm option today for those okay. folks that don't love arms overhead. Otherwise, we could go arms overhead, reach up, and then lean over to the side a little bit. And here we're getting some lateral flexion. Thank you for taking the option, Jody. I appreciate that. I like that too. Yeah, kind of lean over to the side a little bit and release. And then we'll go to the other side. Left foot forward, right leg back a little bit. Keep driving down into your rear heel. Bend the front knee a little bit. And then we can bring those arms. You're going to take the bent arm option. Thank you. So right here. And then otherwise arms up. And then we can lateral flex over to the side here a little bit and get some nice side flexion through the body. And release and shake that out. And now let's take a seat for a seated stretch. So you can come on in a little bit. And let's cross any ankle over. Same one? Or? Yeah. Okay. Pick, pick one because we'll switch to the other. Okay. And then lean forward. Oh, that and then you feel that stretch really that good. you're getting like right, right in through the hips. So this is, this is a nice stretch because you can be anywhere and sneak in a stretch. You could be on a conference call. You could be... I need to start doing that. Doing those <laughs> you, you could be filming a segment and you can just lean in and look really interested and have your great so if I start glute doing that release. Next time you'll know where I'm doing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and let's switch to the other side. Let's cross the ankle over and lean into it a little bit. Think about really hinging at the hips, drawing the belly down towards the thigh a little. And another thing you could do is kind of pull the knee upward and then it just increases the stretch mm -hmm. across the glutes there a little bit. Yeah. And so those are some of my favorite stretches that you can, you can do anywhere. And again, there's, there's so many more, but that's, that's just one of them. Yes, especially, especially if you do them every day, every day. And again, the key to feeling better is to just move more. And it doesn't need to be, oh, I have to commit to a whole hour and I don't have time for an hour. 
It could, be, it could be just five minutes here, it could be 10 minutes there. It's really whatever you can fit in and just give yourself freedom and um, permission to just do what works for you. And if um, our viewers want more information about Flow State, about classes, about joining any of the activities, yes. just go to your website. Absolutely, theflowstate.com. So it's F-L-O. S T A T E. There's no W in flow state, but yeah. So it's 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 a ton of fun, and um, first class is always free. First couple weeks of membership, um, you know. Heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. Free. So so that's all good. And we actually have a, a differentiator right now. A very very exciting one. We've just added for our members a new virtual fitness assessment. It's private. A private virtual fitness assessment where where I sit down with you and we talk about what's valuable to you, what you need, what you're looking for. We do a little movement assessment and you get six weeks of a curated class prescription. You get your own class prescription with links to these are the classes that you need per what you like, what you wanna do, and what your body says you need. And so no, one else, no one else is doing that and um, it's, it's hot off the press and would love to share that. And for members that join now, that's no additional charge. That's just part of what you get as a member. Thanks, Rachel. As always, great to have you on the program. So thank you. Great information. I feel so much better already. So thanks. Well, and that is our program. Thank you for joining us. We'll hope to see you next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.